All right, welcome back to the Caddy Tutorials on Revit. We're gonna jump right in and finish up going over the basic um, edit commands. So the next one is going to be a line. Um, this is a command you wanna pay special attention to because you're gonna use it a lot in Revit. It's one of my favorite commands, especially when you start creating families um, and locking things. Uh, we'll get into that later, but you have to use the align command to lock anything on a reference plane. So. Let's just jump right into it. Um, tell you what, let's go ahead and draw a little garage wing over here. Why not? So what I want to do is, I'm going to go up to the home, grab a reference plane, and let's just draw it off this corner at 45 degrees, which would be 135 off of zero. So there's a reference plane, and we could even draw another one. perpendicular to that one just to kind of outline our garage and then we can use the align command now with the align command I'm just going to draw a wall here same wall I've had and you hit align my shortcut key for align is AA and I believe out of the box I want to say it's AL I'm not really positive of that since I've changed mine See if I can find it up here since then there it is. It's um, AL, there it is. And there's your line tool right there. So anyway, you pick a line, you pick what you want to align it to, and then you can see this little blue line showing that you picked it, and then you pick what you want to align. And I want to align that the middle. Remember, I can hit my tab key and get that edge. And you'll notice it snaps it right to it. And there's a little lock I was talking about. Um, we'll get into the lock later. Or actually, I can even show you now. If I lock that, now that wall is locked to this reference plane. So what that means, if I was to take this ref reference plane and say move it out here, you can see the wall goes along with it. And that is pretty much how doors and windows are parametric. You know, you draw your reference plane in the family editor, which we'll get to later, and you align and lock these extrusions to it, and that way when you change sizes with a parameter, it'll automatically move with it. So that's the align command with a lock. I'm just gonna undo a little bit. Now, how do I unlock that? Well, I just pick that wall and boom. Now it's unlocked. Now if I was to move that line, you can see the wall is not going with it. So there's your align command. Um, let's go ahead and draw another wall over here and we'll align it to that reference plane. I'm going to just kind of block out a garage here. And I'll also show you the trim command while I'm at it. Um, trim is a little different than an AutoCAD. There is no fillet or chamfer in Revit. It's all trim. And the way you trim is hit your trim button, which is TR. I believe that's the default. Yep, that's what I got mine still set up as. And you hit the size you want to keep. That's how you trim in Revit. So for instance, if this was going through here and I wanted to trim it in AutoCAD, I would trim off of this line and then pick the side I want to get rid of. Well, Revit's the opposite. You pick what you want to keep. So if I was to pick this edge, it would do the opposite of what I'm thinking. So just, that'll take a little bit of getting used to for you AutoCAD folk, but you just pick the side you want to keep. And then there's also extend, which this is extend, and that's multiple extend. Um, you can still trim with this command, or you can extend. I can extend that. Boom. Now that wall's extended. And the multiple just does keeps the, the command active, so you can do multiple things. That's the only difference. And you'll notice your walls clean up. Of course, that cleanup looks a little crazy to me. Oh, that's because of this wall right here, which actually will get us into our next command. We're going to split that wall, turn that into an interior wall, and have the garage come around like this. But we'll get to that in a second. So let's, uh, let's go back to our mirror command that we learned a little earlier. And let's just mirror this wall. Get the back of the garage. And we'll trim that out as well. And then we can use our temporary dimensions. I don't know if you guys remember those from earlier on, but I'm gonna go to the outside. And let's make it, I don't know, 20 feet deep. And there you go. There's the beginnings of your garage. Now I want to have a room for a door here, so I can just come off here, 
boom, there's my there's my exterior wall. So that would be my garage. You can maybe do a little storage area here. This isn't gonna be architecturally correct. I'm just you know throwing this in here on a whim just to kind of show you some commands. So there's your align command, and you can align anything. Um, I believe I showed this to you earlier, but if I had this door, let's say this door was up here. Oh, they're already locked. Let me unlock them real quick. You know, I can align doors, windows, whatever. That's again the align command from the center. Pick the one you want to align to first and then the thing you want to align to it. Boom. And then if I hit this lock button, just like in these doors, now when I move one door, the other one goes with it automatically because they're locked together. And it doesn't have to be the same thing. It could be a door to a window. It could be a wall. It could be a wall to a reference plane. You can align anything pretty much to anything. That's why align is so universal. Um, it's a great command. So I'm actually going to take this wall and just, and now I remember that these are joined. If I drag this top wall down just a little bit, it's going to stay joined. And I'm just going to come in here and just simply stick a door in here. Just so it looks sort of correct. So there is your line command. Now, even though I have a door here, this brings it to our next command, which is split. That's this right here. Split an element. Or you can split with a gap. And it tells you what the gap's going to be. Or, if you notice under just a regular split, you can delete the inner segment. So there's a couple of different splits. Um, I don't want to, of course, if you hit delete the inner segment and I split it from here to here, it's going to take that out automatically. That's, that's what that means. Undo that. And if I wanted to split with a 12 inch gap, let's say, it'll automatically gap it out for me. So those are the uh, different types of splits. And then what we're actually gonna use this time is a split by default without deleting an inner segment. And I'm just gonna split this wall just on this side of the door. Boom. I'm gonna split it and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim it again. So now I've got my exterior wall, and I will turn this into an interior wall. Now the way I'll do that is to match the properties of the wall. Um, and I do have an issue because all my stuff is... There it is. Sorry. All my stuff's keyboard shortcuts, so I don't really remember where a lot of these commands are on there. Um, match properties is right there. MA is a keyboard shortcut. So if I type MA, First, you just pick the wall you want it to become. So I want it to be this wall. Match that property, and then boom, match that. And there you go. That wall, as you see it change type. And again, I'll use the align command, because this wall, or actually I can first use the extend command. I want to extend this wall to there. So remember, extend, pick where you want to extend it to, and then what you want to extend to it. Boom, automatically cleans up. But you know they're not going to build this this way. This wall is going to continue from this stud wall. So I'll just align it from that edge to that edge. And there you go. Now it's correct. It's cleaned up. Um, a little bit more cleanup here required. Just extend this out here so I can grab it. And you can extend these reference planes. I'm just going to take this reference plane Actually, I can't remember if I left these locked or not. I don't even need to do that. I could just grab this wall and grab this corner and move it up to that corner so it cleans up very nicely. And you can see I didn't have that locked. So once I align something to a reference plane, I can get rid of that reference plane if I choose. I don't need it anymore, which is really good. You need to get really used to drawing reference planes. Um, I drew my main reference planes through the main part of the building here. but. I mean, I can line anything to this reference plane. If I wanted this door to actually be right in the center of the building, I can. it's almost there, but now it's exactly. So you want to get used to drawing reference planes to block out your model. And you'll also use those in family creation extensively. I mean, you will use reference planes a lot when you're creating families. So it takes us through trim, um, split, align. There is an offset command, you know, with parametric dimension, uh, I'm sorry, with temporary dimensions. You don't really need the offset command that much, but there it is in case you need it. And unlike AutoCAD, you have to give it a value here. So let's just say 10 feet. I'm just gonna show this to you real quick. 
Or actually, what I could have done instead of mirror this back wall, this is another way to do it. I could offset this front wall 20 feet. And you can see, look right here, you'll see the blue line show up. Can you see that blue line? That's because I'm on the left side of the wall. If I switch over to the right side of the wall, you can see out here, the blue line will show up on that side. So just by going to one side of the wall or the other, that tells me which side it's going to offset, which is pretty nice. So I just click it, and there's my offset. Of course, my wall is backwards. So all I would have to do is come here and flip my wall, and then trim it out. And I'm done. But you got to remember when you offset, you have to check your dimension, which actually you can also check your dimensions here with the measure tool. I'm going to measure from here to here, and I am 20 feet, so it happened to work out. A lot of times when you do your walls, especially, you have to take the thickness of the wall into account, because when you think you're offsetting it, say four foot clear, it'll really be three foot six. So always check your dimensions. It's better to get everything in the right place now than further down the line when you've got roofs and floors and everything on. So just be diligent about checking everything that you can check. Um, that's pretty much all of the basic commands, the basic edit commands. Um, just get used to using them, practice them, especially that align uh, tool. You're going to want to use that extensively, like I said. So in the next chapter or in the next video, we're going to get into starting to annotate the model. So we're going to go ahead and talk about dimensions. Um, one thing I will do real quick, just to put it in here. Let's just go ahead and put a door. Let's leave that on. Load a family. And we're just going to put an overhead door in. And let's do a sectional. And it is 8 foot wide by 6 6 tall. It's a pretty small door. Let's go ahead and create another one. And make it uh, 10 feet by 8 feet. I'll name it. And then right here under height, it'll be 8 feet. And under width, it'll be 10 feet. And this is all talking about families. And we haven't really gotten into this yet, but we will. Trust me. And there's one door and another door. And again, this isn't going to be architecturally correct. I'm just kind of throwing this in there just to show you what you can do in Revit. So like I said, next, next uh, tutorial is going to be on dimensioning. And we'll start annotating the model. Thanks for joining us.